نحمده ونصلي ونسلم على سيدنا ومولانا محمد رسوله النبي الأمين المكين الحميد الكريم الرؤوف الرحيم وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين وصحبه الكرام المتقين المخلصين أما بعد فعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الذين يتبعون الرسول النبي الأمي صدق الله مولانا العظيم respected and most dearest brothers, scholars, teachers, students, my dearest friends and colleagues, and participants of the Grand Maulid Camp hosted by Minhaj Muslim Generations. It is indeed through the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and through the blessings of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam that we are now in the final session of this grand Maulid camp and now we prepare to leave and depart this beautiful camp and in this final session we will use this opportunity to discuss and speak about some imperatives of being leaders of the youth in your communities, some responsibilities and some duties you all have as a leading Muslim organization in the UK as well as in Europe. Respected brothers, I'll speak a bit about the responsibilities of being a member of a youth organization, the responsibilities you all have as an individual, as well as responsibilities we all have as a group, as a community, as a fraternity, as a brotherhood. And then, right at the end, we will speak about another half of our personality. Which we must fulfill and complete. And that is the spiritual half. Which longs for attachment with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is the place where the heart and the soul rests. And the heart and the soul has been separated from the kingdom of Allah Almighty and the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of Allah's throne. And the heart seeks and the soul seeks a journey back towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so, a human being has two halves to their personalities, a physical half and a spiritual half. The physical half contains the mind, the intellect, and the physical body. Whereas the spiritual half it contains the spirit and soul and the heart. And respected brothers, if we are to become complete individuals, if we are to become complete human beings, then we must fulfill the obligations of both halves, the spiritual and the physical. And the obligations of the physical half can be fulfilled by volunteering, by associating, by working hard, 
for youth organisations such as Minhaj Muslim Generations in the UK, Minhaj Youth League in Europe, and other such youth organisations working for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the love of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So we'll proceed to look at some important points and some duties and responsibilities we all have. In the first session we spoke about the life of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, and the mawlid of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and events that took place before the birth of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And in this final session, we will look at some events and some occurrences during the life of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So we can complete the cycle and we will use these events to make comparisons and to extract some points so we can understand our duties as Muslims, as youth, as members of MMG, of NYL and Minhajul Quran International. I recited before you a verse of the Holy Quran in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says الَّذِينَ يَتَّبِعُونَ الرَّسُولَ النَّبِيَّ الْأُمِّينَ That these people follow a prophet and messenger who has not been taught by anyone in this world. Respected brothers, normal translators, they translate the word al-ummi as unlettered or someone who hasn't learned. And this is the normal translation used in various translations. The respected brothers, Huzur Sayyidi Shaykh al-Islam, in the love of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Understanding the true secret of the greatness and the esteemed station of the Holy Prophet ﷺ says that no, Al-Ummi doesn't mean the unlettered or unlearned Prophet. In fact, Al-Rasul Al-Nabiyy Al-Ummi, it means that the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alihi Wasallam was taught by no one in this world. In fact, the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, indeed he was only taught by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself. The people of Quraysh, the opponents of Muslims and the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, they could make the claim that whatever the beloved Prophet, peace be upon him, is teaching you, whatever verses of the Holy Qur'an he recites to you, whatever knowledge and wisdom he gives you, this hasn't come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In fact, he has learned this from the scriptures of the past. Or that he has learned this from the books of the past. Or that he hears this from the knowledgeable scholars of Syria. Or that he has learned this from another source. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, to be clear of all of these accusations. And so the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was described as being a prophet who had not learned anything from this world. That this prophet, 
He has not learned a single line from the teachers of this world. That the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, has not learned a single piece of knowledge or information from the knowledgeable people of this world. And no believers and no humanity, you must understand that this Prophet has not learned from this world, but he has learned from the Kingdom of Heaven and the owner of those heavens and the Lord Almighty Himself. Respected brothers, an Ummi means, firstly, someone who has not been taught by anyone in this world, but has been taught by Allah. And secondly, Zu Sayyidi Shaykh al-Islam says, that Ar-Rasul al-Nabiyya al-Ummi, al-Ummi, it is also used for the city of Mecca, which is described in the Holy Quran as Ummul Qura, the center of all of this universe. The center of this kingdom, of this world, of this earth, and the capital city of this world. So Zu Sayyidi Shaykh al-Islam says, Ar-Rasul al-Nabiyya al-Ummi means that the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam is the center and origin of humanity and mankind. That the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, is the center of all existence and from his noble personality, everything in this world emerges. And from his blessings, we have learnt knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and knowledge of the unseen. And the third meaning of Al-Ummi is in the meaning of Al-Nabi. And Al-Nabi. It literally means someone who gives you information of the unseen. So the Holy Prophet وسلم, wasn't like regular or normal individuals, scholars of this world who taught you information that you had access to in this world. But the Holy Prophet he came here to teach us the information, knowledge, and wisdom of a world and kingdom we could not see. So respected brothers, what is the lesson we learn? What is the principle we learn? What are the responsibilities we learn from this verse? And the first thing is that just as the Holy Prophet وسلم, was the origin of this universe and the origin of this existence and what the Holy Prophet peace be upon him propagated was original, unscathed and uninfluenced by anything in this world. Respected members of Minhaj Muslim generations, respected members of Minhaj Youth League, my dearest brothers and members of the youth, you must understand that just as the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, was an origin, he was a source in himself. Our duty, our responsibility, as members of MMG and MYL, that in this society and in this community, we must also become an origin. We must also become original. We must become a source of guidance. We must become a source of influence. And what we teach what we propagate and how we communicate 
with members of society, the information we give, the knowledge we give, it cannot be influenced by the trends of this world and society today. But the only influence we must have is the influence of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, was original and he was a trend setter 1400 years ago. Whatever he taught Meccan society, he taught them about the rights of children, the rights of women, the rights of the poor, the rights of those who were neglected. He taught us socio-economic equality. He taught us the value of knowledge. These things were unheard of 1400 years ago in Mecca. So the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, and Islam came as a trendsetter and not as someone or a religion or a movement that follows whatever exists in society. And so respected members of MMG and MYL, you must promise yourselves today that as an organization, that as a youth group, you will become trendsetters in society. You won't follow the trends that you find in society. You won't become pressurized by the trends you face in society. You won't be pressurized by what society forces you to dress like. You won't be pressurized by how society wishes you to think. You won't be pressurized by the way society wishes you to speak and live. But the only pressure and the only influence you will take in your life is the influence of the Holy Prophet And this is the purpose of MMG and MYL. To reconnect our lost connection with the Holy Prophet And number two, respected brothers, when revelation comes to the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, at the cave of Hira, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's first words and first utterance to the beloved was, A'udhu billahi min shaytanir rajeem, iqra. Sayyidina Jibreel alayhi salam, he comes to the Beloved and he says, O oh, Beloved, read. And the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, says, I will not recite. And then Sayyidina Jibreel says again, Iqra, O oh, Beloved, read, recite. And the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, says, I shall not recite. And at this point, Sayyidina Jibreel understood that this man, that this prophet, that this beloved of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he will not respond to my command. He will not respond to my request. But he will only respond to the request of his Lord Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So then Sayyidina Jibreel says, Iqra bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq. That recite in the name of your Lord. And then the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam recites the verses of the Holy Quran. And so the message we get here is that the foundation of Islam that Islam begins with iqra, recitation, reading, observing. So we understand that the first step forward in Islam is towards the destination 
from her enemy of knowledge. Respected brothers, respected members of MMG and MYL, Huzur Sayyidi Shaykh al Islam has spent his entire life, more than 60 years of his life, sacrificing for the path of knowledge, sacrificing for the path of ilm, propagating knowledge, propagating wisdom and the truth, whereas society and community and the world around us is moving away from the path of knowledge. It is moving away from the path of authentic knowledge. We as members of MQI, MMG and MYL have a deep responsibility and duty towards achieving, acquiring, learning, comprehending, memorizing, then propagating and teaching knowledge to all those around us and our communities around us. So respected members of MMG, MYL, my dearest brothers, when we leave today, we must promise that every single day we shall begin by reciting the Holy Qur'an. However much you can recite with translation in English or in your languages, if it's only possible to recite one page, then one page is enough. You recite the Holy Qur'an, sit, close your eyes and contemplate and meditate and think about the verses, think about the meanings, think about what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us, think about what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is communicating to us and absorb and consume that knowledge and that information and use it to transform your lives. Then respected brothers, spend some time reciting at least three narrations and hadith of the Holy Prophet Sit there and read some beautiful lines and words about the Beloved Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The lovers are always seeking more information. The lovers are always seeking more knowledge. The lovers always want to know and always want to be more aware of the Beloved. So we should at least vow and promise to recite three narrations, a hadith of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, at least a day with translation. And then, if you have more time, then you should read various books on various topics, read widely and vastly, try to read, try to understand this knowledge, consume it, absorb it, and then use it in your daily lives. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم وأما بنعمة ربك فحدث That as for the favor and special blessing of your Lord, share this with everyone. Respected brothers, members of MQI, MMG, MYL, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us the task of reviving our beautiful religion. Allah has given us the task of reviving His religion, His faith, Islam for this hundred years. At the end of every century, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends a reviver, a mujaddid, who revives Islam, who revives the teaching of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, who revives the love of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, who sets the hearts on fire and on blaze with the love and reverence of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, who helps 
Muslims reconnect with Islam and with their beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and respected brothers be in no doubt that in this century Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has given this task of reviving and tajdeed to Huzur Sayyidi Shaykh Al-Islam and Minhaj Al-Quran International. Be in no doubt that Huzur Sayyidi Shaykh Al-Islam has been given the responsibility of reviving Islam for this hundred years. And Minhaj Al-Quran has been given the responsibility of reviving this religion for this hundred years. So respected brothers, you must understand that when Allah has given Huzur Sayyidi Shaykh Al-Islam an MQI and you all this responsibility, then no one else in this hundred years will be given this responsibility. So it is up to us, it is up to you, it is up to all of you to take this mantle, to take this responsibility, to give your lives, to sacrifice your lives, in the path of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, to sacrifice your life, reviving the teachings of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, to sacrifice your life, reviving the love of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, to sacrifice your life, spreading love, mercy, compassion, and kindness in society, and to sacrifice your life, spreading the love, awareness, and knowledge of Allah and His beloved Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alihi Wasallam. Allah says, when you have been given a special favor and blessings, then it is your responsibility to share this with everyone. So we have been given the responsibility of tajdeed, revivalism. We cannot sit at home we cannot sit in our rooms. We cannot be idle and lazy. We cannot sit back. But this is the time to move forward towards our destination. This is the time to move towards our purpose, towards our goal, towards our aim and objective. And we mustn't stop now. We must continue to march. We must use this opportunity, this camp, To renew our promise, to renew our vigor, to renew our motivation. And from today onwards, we will not sit at home, but we will spread the love of Allah and His Holy Prophet. And we will get involved in MQI, we will get involved with MYL, we will get involved with Minhaj, Muslim generations. We will leave our houses. We will get physically involved. We will volunteer. We will lead. We will give our service. We will give our time. If we have time to fulfill our needs in this world, to work and to earn an income, then we must also have time for the one who created us and the one who sent us with a purpose and the one who gave us a purpose in life, the beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alihi Wasallam. Respected brothers, point number four. If we look at the seerah of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the people of Quraysh, they confined the clan of Hazrat Abu Talib in confinement and social imprisonment this was known as the boycott of the clan and the family of Hazrat Abu Talib, in which the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, Sayyidina Ali, and many early Muslims were confined. They were persecuted. They were marginalized from society. The Meccans refused to trade with them. The Meccans refused to work with them. The Meccans refused to give them money and income. The Meccans refused to give them a livelihood. The Meccans refused to marry them. They refused to engage with them socially. 
and they wanted to confine them, they wanted to drive them out. And in these three difficult years, Hazrat Abu Talib, the blessed uncle of Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and the father of Sayyidina Ali, he was given an offer by the people of Mecca that, oh Abu Talib, why are you protecting this man? Why are you protecting your nephew? We will give you money, we will give you riches, we will give you the luxuries of this world. Abandon this man. But look at the love, look at the affection, look at the reverence, look at the care, and look at the deep love Hazrat Abu Talib had for the beloved Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said, O Meccans, I do not need the riches of this world. I do not need the luxuries of this world. I do not need the wealth of this world. For not any of the wealth, the money and luxuries of this world can snatch and buy my loyalty and love for my blessed nephew. And I will never abandon him. So in three years, Muslim faced many difficulties. Respected brothers, we must understand that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He took the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, his father before he was born, that He took His blessed mother at a very, very young age of six, and then His only other support in this world, His grandfather, Sayyidina Abdul Muttalib, He took him from the blessed. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and then eventually the Holy Prophet peace be upon him is left with no support in this world he's left with no reliance in this world he has no one to support him no one to console him, comfort him and Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is telling humanity, he's telling us all that this noble Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the greatness you see in him the success that you see he has achieved this isn't due to the reliance and support of anyone in this world that the success this Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has achieved it is only and only because of the support of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and so respected brothers, we must understand that it is part of our personality and character development to use difficult times, difficult circumstances, difficult conditions. When society is against you, when community is against you, sometimes your families turn on you, sometimes your friends turn on you. Those you love turn on you. Sometimes you have difficulties at work. Sometimes you face difficulty in your education. Sometimes you face difficulty with your families. But you must look at this as a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You must look at this as an opportunity. You must look at this as a blessing in disguise. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to strengthen your conviction. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to strengthen your resolution. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to strengthen your resolve. He wants to strengthen your conviction. He wants to strengthen your character. He wants to give you courage. And He wants you to realize that there's no turning back. And the only way forward is to walk ahead. Respected brothers and sisters, this is the conviction we need, this is the resolve and the courage we need as members of MQI, members of MYL and MMG, that in difficult times and circumstances, we must never give up, we must never lose hope, and we must strive towards our objective and target, we must strive towards our aims, and we must do so with courage. 
unrelentingly without fear or failure. And respected brothers, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees that his people, that his servants, and the Holy Prophet peace be upon him sees that his servants and his followers are striving towards their aim and objective in their lives and the aims and objectives of this movement that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says like Hazrat Abu Talib to the Holy Prophet peace be upon him Allah says that I will never abandon them and they will always have my support they will always have my help and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's help will help us achieve our targets and give us success. Respected brothers, the fifth and final point when the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he migrated to Medina to Munawwara. He established a new society. He established a new state. He established a new community. And he formed a constitution. He changed the paradigm and the way of thinking in society. In society, of the Arab world was very similar to society today. It was very individualistic. People were selfish. People only cared for themselves. They only cared for their families. They only cared to earn their income, to accumulate wealth, to accumulate houses and properties to look out for their own interests and they didn't care for anyone else but the Holy Prophet ﷺ, he transformed society he transformed this paradigm and he transformed this way of thinking and he taught the Arab world and the people of Medina to stop thinking in individualistic terms and to start thinking in collectivist terms. To stop thinking like individuals. To start thinking as a collective group. To start thinking as a community. To start thinking as an organization. To start thinking as a society. To start thinking like a group of brothers. To start thinking like a fraternity. To start thinking as those who care for each other. To stop thinking only for yourselves. And to start thinking for others as well. To start cooperating with others. To start preferring what you prefer for yourself, for your brothers as well. And only unless we can think in terms of community, and brotherhood until then there is no success and until then there is no thriving and until then there is no future for us so the Holy Prophet peace be upon him he broke the shackles of individualism he broke the shackles of selfishness and he freed and liberated the minds of society and he taught us to think of each other he taught us to care for each other. He taught us to care for our neighbors, our friends and family, and even those who we did not know and those who we did not recognize. And this is the beautiful message of this verse. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytani rajeem Walladheena tabawwa'u ad-dara wal-imana min qablihim yuhibbu من هاجر إليهم ولا يجدون في صدورهم حاجة. That the people of Ansar, the people of Medina al Munawwara, the Muslims of Medina, they did not know the people of Mecca. They did not recognize the people and Muslims who had traveled and migrated from Mecca to Mukarrama. It's not like 
they were distant relatives or family members or friends. It's not like they knew each other. They were complete strangers. Yet the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the love of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, it joined them, it connected them. And Allah says the people of Medina loved those who migrated and loved to support and help those from Mecca. The people of Medina, they did not recognize or even know them, yet they went out of their way to support them. They were, yet they went out of their way to host them. They gave up everything they had for complete strangers. Why? For the sake of the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And then the verse says, Hajatan mimma utu wa yuktiruna ala anfusihim wa law kana bihim khasasa wa man yuqa shuha nafsihi fa ulaika humul muflihun. And the people of Medina, the Ansar. They were so selfless. They were so sacrificing. They were so loving, so generous, so kind that complete strangers have traveled from Mecca to Medina. Yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that they preferred the well-being they preferred the welfare, they preferred the happiness, and they preferred the comfort of the people of Makkah above the comfort of themselves. They preferred the Muslims of Makkah, they preferred the well-beings of the migrants of Makkah upon their own preference. They gave up whatever little they had and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَوْ كَانَ بِهِمْ خَصَاصًا Even though the people of Medina weren't rich, even though they didn't have much in their pockets, even though they were not wealthy, but still they gave up everything for the people of Mecca. And the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, said, You must divide your wealth in half. Choose a family from Mecca and give half of your wealth to the family of Mecca and the migrants. You must divide your houses in half. Give half of your house to the migrants of Mecca and keep only half for yourself. You must keep half of your business and trade for yourself and give the other half to the people of Mecca. Oh dear brothers, if the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, gave us that order today, would we be in that position to give up our houses? Are we in the position to give up our trade and business? Are we in the position to give up half of our income and jobs? Are we in a position to fact sacrifice our own interests and selfish needs for our brothers in need? Respected brothers, Members of MQI, MYL, and MMG. This is the responsibility, this is the duty that the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, has given you. That we must help transform the community and society around us. We must help reform society and move it away from its selfish individualism and move towards collectivity. And as members of MMG, we must strive to create a sense of bonding, to create a sense of brotherhood, to create a sense of fraternity. We are all gathered here. We must now stay in contact with each other. We must now become brothers 
sincere brothers of each other, just like the brothers of Medina al Munawwara and Makkah al Mukarramah. Get to know each other, exchange contacts, speak to each other, stay in touch, and use this platform, MMG, to help each other, to teach each other, to comfort each other, to support each other, and use this opportunity to create a strong bond of brotherhood that can never be broken. And so respected brothers, we have been given this great opportunity at this grand Mawlid camp to reconnect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His blessed Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We have embarked on a journey of love. The Rihmatul Ashikeen, the journey of the lovers, ila al Habib to the beloved. And now we understand the responsibilities and duties we have as members of Minhaj al Quran, as members of Minhaj Juice League, as members of Minhaj Muslim generations. We must establish a firm commitment to each other. We must establish a strong bond, a sense of fraternity and brotherhood. And we must strive towards our aim and objectives unrelentingly without the fear of failure. And as long as we have trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah shall never abandon us and Allah will grant us success. Respected brothers, just before we conclude, in a few minutes, I'd like to complete the phrase I mentioned earlier. That a human being consists of two halves, a physical half and a spiritual one. He spoke about the physical half, serving humanity, serving society, working for MQI, working for MMG, working for MYL. Respected brothers, there's another half that we must nourish, another half that we must water, another half that we must take care of, and that is the heart, the spirit and the soul, which longs to go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The soul which was created in the heavens and used to spend time in the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now the soul desires to go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this place, this world, is an unknown kingdom. It is homesick here, and it wishes to travel back. And the soul now looks at its creator, its mawla, its lord, its owner, its beloved. And it says, when can I go back to my beloved and my lord? When Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam captured by the moon. The king ordered a massive fire to be built and he wanted to punish Sayyidina Ibrahim. And he said, oh people, arrest Sayyidina Ibrahim, bring him towards me. Create the fire and we shall put him in the fire. And so Sayyidina Ibrahim Alayhi salam is standing there, he's tied up. And the oppressive king, he places Sayyidina Ibrahim in the fire. And now Sayyidina Ibrahim is in the middle of the fire. And at this point, an angel comes to Sayyidina Ibrahim and he says, O oh Ibrahim, tell me, if you wish, if you want, just give me the order, just give me the command, and I'll put out this fire. Oh Ibrahim, just give me the signal, and I will put out this fire. 
and I will take you out of your misery. But look at the love Sayyidina Ibrahim has for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look at the trust Sayyidina Ibrahim has upon his Lord. Look at the satisfaction Sayyidina Ibrahim has with his Lord. He says that if you are asking me to put out this fire, then no, I don't need your help. But, O oh angel, if this question is from my Lord and my Creator, if this question is from my beloved, then, huwa a'lamu bihali min su'ali then he knows the state of my heart more than this question. Then my Lord knows how satisfied I am to burn in his love in this fire. He knows how relaxed and calm and satisfied I am to give my life and sacrifice my life for his sake and for his love. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so pleased and happy with his blessed servant. Allah orders the fire to be cool. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Ya na'u kuni bardam wa salaman ala Ibrahim. O oh fire, be cool and calm and do not hurt my Ibrahim. Respected brothers, we must develop this same link and relationship of love with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We must develop this same longing and trust and tawakkul upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We must reconnect our hearts and souls with our Creator and our Lord. It is mentioned that once Sayyida Rabia al adawiya she was walking in the streets of Basra and they said in one hand she had a lantern of fire and in one hand she had a jug of water and the people asked, O oh Rabia, why do you have a lantern of fire in one hand? And why do you have a jug of water in the other? And she said, I wish to use this fire to burn Jannah, heaven, and to use this water to put out the fire of hell. And the people asked, O oh Rabia, why is this? And she said, because I wish that people worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that people stand in the middle of the night in front of their Lord, that people close their eyes in the remembrance of their beautiful creator, their Lord. People worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sincerely not to achieve heaven and not from the fear of hell but just for the rada and the satisfaction and the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I want people not to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the heavens and for the ranks and stations of heaven and not from the fear of hell but only for one sake and for one sake only that is to achieve a glimpse at the divine beauty and countenance of the Lord Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Respected brothers Uzur Sayyidi Shaykh al-Islam has taught us that we must strive beyond the desire for the heavens, the desire for the luxuries and the desire of the comforts of heaven and what is there. 
And the only desire we must have is for what is beyond heaven. The only desire we must have is for what is beyond the arsh, the throne, and for it, what is beyond the Siddhartha Muntaha. And the only desire we must have is the desire of our Mawla, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we end with Sayyidina Dhunun Misri, Rahimahullah. The story is an inspiration for all brothers here, members MMG of MYL. All seekers of the path of love. All seekers of divine love. All seekers of divine pleasure. All seekers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All those who wish that their souls can return to the kingdom of heaven. To return to what is beyond the heaven and return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sayyidina Dhunul Misri was walking in the streets and he saw that there's a young man, a beautiful youth. He is standing there and a group of children are pelting him with stones. The beautiful man is just standing in the streets and children are throwing stones at him. And so Sayyidina Dhunun Misri, he comes closer to the group of children and he asks them, why are you throwing stones at this man? And the children respond, because this man claims to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Sayyidina Dhunun is very curious now. Who is this person? Who is this beautiful youth? Who is this young man who claims to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Let me see what he is like. And so Sayyidina Dhunun approaches this young boy and he sees the signs of ma'rifa on his face. Sees divine light and moon on his face. And he asked this man, Is it right what these children say? It is true that you see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And the young boy responds, What are you saying? Of course I see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In fact, tell me, is there a moment in my life where I do not see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? They say that I see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No, but there is not even a single moment. There is not even a single second where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's divine countenance and beauty is hidden from my eye. But I see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala constantly. So Sayyidina Zunun, he says, Amajnoon anta? Are you crazy? Are you mad? And the man responds, the young boy responds, أَمَّا عِنْدَ أَهْلِ الْأَرْضِ فَنَعْمُ وَعِنْدَ أَهْلِ السَّمَاءِ فَلَا That if you ask in the sight of the people of this world, then yes, I am mad, I am crazy. But if you ask in the sight of the people of the heavens and the Sidratul Muntaha, then no, I'm not crazy. And so Sayyidina Zunnoon Nisri asks, كَيْفَ حَالُكَ مَعَ الْمَوْلَى 
How is your condition? How is your relationship with your Lord, your Mawlana, your Beloved? And the man responds, Mundu araftuhu ma jafawtu. That since I have known him, since I have recognized him, since I have found him, I have never been disloyal to my beloved. That from the day my beloved came in my life, that from the day the Beloved has come into my heart, that from the day the Beloved has come into my eyes, I have never been disloyal to Him. I have never disobeyed Him. I have never turned away from Him. And as a result, my Beloved has never turned away from me. My beloved is also loyal to me. And then Sayyidina Abu Noon asks, Oh young boy, tell me one last thing. How long have you known him? How long have you known your beloved? And the young boy responds, منذ جعل اسمي في المجانين. Since the day he has put my name in the list of the crazy and bad people. The day my beloved made me mad in his love. The day my beloved made me mad in his reverence. The day the Beloved made me mad in His path, the day the Beloved made me mad on the journey towards Him, that is the day and that is how long I have known Him. Respected brothers, We must look into our hearts. We must dig deep into the valleys of our hearts. We must reflect on the spiritual state of our hearts. If we are to find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala If we are to find our Mawla, if we are to find our Beloved, if this soul is to travel back to its Creator and the origin, if this soul is to travel back to where it came from, if this soul is to go back to the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we must live a life of madness, a life of estrangement, a life full of extreme, a life full of severe a life full of mad love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And unless we lose ourselves, unless we lose ourselves, we cannot find our beloved. Unless we stop seeing ourselves, we cannot see the beloved. Unless we stop hearing ourselves, we cannot hear the Beloved. Respected brothers, 
This is the message of this beautiful grand Maulid camp that as we leave we must now promise to embark on the journey back towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We must embark on a journey back to the beloved, to our Mawla, to our Creator. We must lose ourselves on the way. And as we lose ourselves, we will start to find traces of the beloved in our heart. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the esteemed love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the esteemed love and reverence of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to serve this beautiful religion, this beautiful path and way of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to become useful members of society and community. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the opportunity to serve humanity. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us istiqamah and steadfastness in this beautiful mission. In this mission that shall revive this beautiful religion for this hundred years. وَمَا عَلَيْنَا إِلَّا الْبَلَاهُ الْمُبِينَ وَالسَّلَامُ عَلَيْكُمْ وَرَحْمَةُ اللَّهِ وَبَرَكَاتُهُ